hello everyone and welcome to my new video a few days ago i uh, made a video about uh, bert and how it can be used for not question answering but similar to that and uh, after that i made a tweet uh, thinking of making a video explaining how to process data and the differences for a uh, question and answering system for bert and roberta so yeah it seems uh, a lot of people would find it useful i myself struggled quite a bit uh, when i started with it so i think uh, making a video about it is nice and um, in this video i'm going to talk about uh, the differences in bert and roberta in terms of data processing only uh, when it comes to question and answering systems so how you should design your data processing pipeline and uh, what you should do what you should not do and what are the differences basically between these two and it's always it's always easy if you just run a script uh, so if you look at hugging face transformers you can just go there and run run squad.py but if you don't understand anything i don't think it's going to be useful for you so it's also it's very important to understand what's going on and try to build the same thing on your own basically so let's let's start so to start with uh, let's see what what do we have at question answering system what kind of data do we have so uh, when we talk about data we have uh, we have a question and some kind of context text right so question is uh, like who is the prime minister of india and uh in context you will have a huge amount of text and with some answer and uh the idea is to look at the question and try to find the answer in the context text uh the starting index and end index start index and end index okay so it looks pretty simple but it's not really so um uh, every every transformer model transform based model like bird robert uh, albert so all of them process the data a little bit differently it's because of uh, the underlying tokenization that they have so for bird the first thing that you need to understand is how it tokenizes so it will try to find the maximum substring so all of the tokenizers mostly do that so, but it has some special tokens so that's what you need to understand so the first special token is cls or classification token and uh, then you have the scp token so whenever a sentence starts it starts with the cls token and it ends with the scp token so it's always the start and this is always the end so now um when you have question and answering systems the question tokens will come here question and context tokens will come right after the first scp token and then we end it again with a scp token so this is the final end so this is for bert the same thing for roberta is a little bit different so roberta also has these special tokens but they are different so you have s question slash s and then context now so here there is a major difference so you have slash s and then another slash s now i might be wrong about this slash uh, so take a look uh, then you have context and you have again a slash s which is a sap token so this is how 
Robert Tudor does it. Okay, it's very important to understand these uh, differences. So start, and then these two are for end, and this is the final end value. So now you have to design your data in this way. So uh, one more thing is context can be huge. So it can be more than 512 tokens. So context can be greater than 512. It can be a big, huge paragraph or multiple paragraphs. So how do, how do you deal with that? So that's when, that's when the document strides come in. So you, you have a huge vector. Let's say this is the tokenized uh, BERT tokenized vector lots of values and yeah some tokens here and this is 1024 let's say 100 uh, 1024 tokens so what you do is you can start with something small because you have to have some space for question token for and for context token and other tokens right so you can start with let's say 128 tokens so let's say this is my 128 tokens. And then you can move with a given stride. So stride can be 32 tokens, 64 tokens. So after, let's say if it's uh, 32 tokens, so then I start from here, then I add this one. So this is again 128 tokens. So that's how you move. And if you, if you don't have any answer in uh, these 128 tokens that you have selected, then you just say, okay, uh, my answer um, value comes at a CLS token to make it, to keep it very simple or this token. If you have answer, then you say, okay, my answer starts from this token and ends at this token. So let's say, uh, quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog so <clears throat> let's say this is your context and now you have some question and for that question uh, it starts from here for that question the answer starts from here and ends here. So what is the start index and the end index? So that's something we have to figure out. So if we just do tokenization by a space, this is my token 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and this is 8. So my start index IDX is four and end IDX is eight, including eight. So between four to eight, you can also say four to nine. Okay, so now uh, we have to make two. Uh, so now we have to add the question. So let's say the question is what did the fox do? So a question for this. So the answer would be jumps over the lazy dog. Let's say, keep it simple. So now what you have to do is you have to add CLS token. Now you have a question and again, uh, SCP token, then you have the context, and then one SCP token. So the context in our case was a quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So now uh, the token indices have changed a little bit. So token index starts from zero for CLS, then one, two, three, four, five, question mark is six, and then you have seven. And then you have the original one, 
with a SCP in the end. Okay. Okay, forget about that. With SCP in the end. So now your start index that was four will become four plus seven. Four plus eight. Sorry. Eight tokens. And then you start. And similarly for your end index. will be 8 plus 8 so 12 and 16 and now you can verify uh, if it's correct or not just by printing it looking at the data so this is the most important thing that you have to understand so now you have uh, two indices start and end and now what what you want to do is to predict them it's as simple as that so you have the you, you have the birth model let's say and uh, uh, when you create the data loader uh, in pytorch for the birth model you will have an input so it will be something like this so custom data loader and it will take certain inputs. Inputs are uh, your question, context, and answer. Do we need anything else? I hope not. And uh, then you, s you see, uh, you take the question. So you can do it in multiple ways. So you can take the question and compare it with the context to find start and end indices based on on character level uh, so why do we do it on character level or why am i doing it on character level is because sometimes uh, you can have indexes that starting in the middle of a word so probably bad uh, training data so let's say if the index starts from p so instead of jumps it's just ps over the lazy dog okay so if you don't start from uh, if, if you don't care about the characters at all and start from from the words so you can you will probably start from over and ignore ps or you will just ignore the whole uh, answer because you won't be able to find a word in question uh, sorry a word in context that matches exactly with the word in answer maybe uh, in that case you are ignoring the answer uh, completely ignoring the data point so you are basically saying that there is no answer which is not true so you can start on character level or you can also start on uh, token level. Uh, so we, we got this. Another thing that you can do is start on token level. So that's also something that you can do. Um, once you have that, you have the tokens for tokens for context you have tokens for question and using the info that was generated here you can define a start token using a simple loop start token and or I will also say and end token for context so you got that you got the start token and end token you got the tokens for question you got the token for context and that's all you need so now you have cls then question tokens and you have scp then 
context tokens and then you have SCP token again so this will become your IDs token IDs and token types will be of the same size so it will be zero times size of this till here till the first SCP token length of this this thing and then you have plus one time the length of this whole thing so that makes your token type IDs and uh, it also makes your um, token IDs and mask will be just one for everything one time so I can say mask will be one into uh, length of token type IDs okay so now the next thing is start token so we have already found the start token which was a uh, token for con a start token for an end token for context so start token will be whatever the start token is x plus length of question tokens plus 2 2 one for CLS one for SCP and same will be and token question tokens plus two and that's all you need and once you have these you have to train a model using start and end token uh, as your target and you can use uh, cross entropy loss so a classification problem you can also use different kinds of laws depending on how you arrange the data or what you do but that's totally up to you so this was about BERT and uh, once you understand how data processing is done for BERT any other transformer model becomes very easy so let's take a look at the code for BERT so what okay for this specific problem I'm using uh, the Skaggle competition uh, for Twitter sentiment extraction but okay let's first see uh, here you have the cross entropy loss and yeah, that would be it right so now if you have the process data function so I can show you the competition okay so since I'm using data for this it would be nice if we just take a quick look so uh, here we have we have a text and we have some kind of selected text and a given sentiment so here uh, this one is much better example so so sad i'll miss you here in san diego and the selected text is so sad and it's a negative sentiment so how are we going to convert this problem to a question and answering problem one thing uh these are tweets so tweets are very small and we don't need to care about strides in this anymore so we don't have a long doc we don't have long documents we can fit everything into 512 tokens if we want so your sentiment uh, will become your question and text will become your answer so taking a look at the kernel here um, I have this process data function so what process data takes is the tweet itself the selected text 
the sentiment and we also have tokenizer and maxlin so uh, let's look at it line by line so i'm taking the length of the selected text and then i say okay my index 0 and index 1 are none that's your starting index and end index on on a character level so then i say okay for index in uh, so this is a generator object uh, so for i for i comma e in uh, so we are doing an enumerate on tweet so it's taking each and every character at a time and it's saying okay if the starting if the character in to selected tweet it's the same as what's in the selected text the first character then we are probably in luck and then i say okay um, start from the index where we found a match in between these two characters and go till the end of the length of selected text and if that's equal to selected text then we have probably we have actually found the answer in the context then i say okay my index 0 is this one and index 1 is this one fine all good now um, i create uh, another vector so this is a vector of zeros of the same length as the tweet. So of all characters in it, including spaces and everything. And I say, okay, my if my index zero is not none and idx one is not none, and they won't be none because they will all they will always find a correct answer. Then uh, going from the start index to the end index plus one. So here I've done minus one, so I'm doing plus one here you have the character target set as one so this will be something like this where you have i'm not writing comma just because i'm lazy so th these are all zeros and some ones and many zeros again so these are the different characters of the tweet including spaces and we have found here okay it, the answer starts at this character and ends at this character index the next thing that we do is we tokenize the tweet so for this i'm using the tokenizer library from hugging face um, it's only because i'll i want to use tweet offset offsets so once we tokenize we see that your tokenized will be tokenized tweet ids uh, will contain uh, different things like first you have the okay i'm not writing it in a in the exactly how it's going to look like but the tokens will be cls then your tweet tokens the tokenized tokens and then you have uh the scp token so now we don't need the scp and cls token for now so that's why I'm doing from one to minus one and you have the offsets. So offsets are uh, something like this. You have zero, zero, you have zero. So zero, zero is for uh, the CLS token. Then it starts at zero to three. So it means uh, starting from the zero or zero at the index of tweet to third index of tweet the string uh, this is your second token so in case of a split you can um, go back to the original one using the offsets so it's quite nice um, and so on now what i do is i enumerate uh, the offsets i enumerate the offset and i check like for offset one and offset two so like for this and this in tweet offsets if any of the value is one which means if sum of the list is greater than zero then i say okay uh, let's append this index so if it goes to the f first one zero three and if it finds okay if uh, sum of care targets between these two offsets is greater than zero i will append it to target index okay so and we keep doing it 
so it's a loop so we do it for all the offsets so your target star will then be uh, the first value inserted in this list and your targets end will be the last value inserted in this list pretty simple so now uh, in question answering system you have to do uh, this part a little bit differently so in in our present data set the data set that i'm looking at right now and using as an example for this video has only three uh, different types of words in the question part so the question part can be positive negative and neutral and since i know these uh, i can this without using the tokenizer um, i used it offline and i saw that for positive the index is 3893 for bird 4997 for negative and 8699 for neutral and i just hard coded them so if you don't if uh, usually when question answering systems you you won't have it like this so for that you have to run the tokenizer step this this step again here okay and then you have to see how many tokens you have there so now my input IDs, so 101 is a token for CLS, 102 is a token for SCP, and 102 for SCP again. So um, I, I know these tokens. So uh, you can just use the tokenizer and see what the CLS and SCP tokens are. So I say, okay, it starts from with a CLS token. Then you have all the tokens for the sentiment, which is this one, and then SCP token, and then the original uh, tweet tokens, and then again a SCP token. And then you similarly you do the token type IDs. So type IDs will be 0, 0 and 0. Now here this is only, uh, this is of the size 1. So if it were of the size 10 or more or whatever size n, then you have to say here how many zeros uh, should be there. And then you have the mask, which is all ones of the length of token type IDs. What I also do is I keep tweet offsets, so I don't I don't have to do that, but I do the same processing I did for uh, token type IDs here, uh, similar processing, not same. So I have zero zero and I multiply it by three. So because of CLS tweet to uh, the sentiment token and then SAP token, and then again I add zero zero in the end for the final SAP token. And now the target start and target end will change. And that's why I have added three to both. So one, two, and three. If you have more tokens, you have to calculate what is the length of this part and change uh, this accordingly, which is also quite simple. And then uh, in BERT, you have the padding on the right side. So you have the input IDs and I just pad with the padding length. And that's all you want to do. That's it. So when you load the data set, now I have created this process data function. And process data function is going to be the same for all kinds of transformer models. No, sorry. Process data fu function is going to exist for all kinds of transformer models. And process data function is the only function that you need to change uh, when you are uh, training a new uh, kind of transformer model so you don't have to care about anything else and then um, you have the tweet data set the data loader um, tweet data set object and in, in inside this one I just say okay my data is process data then I give all the arguments and uh, then I get back the tensors pretty simple and easy um, now when we go to I'm not going to the model part in this video because I've already done it in previous one so now the loss function is you have the start logits and logits that will be of the same size as your number of tokens in, uh, in this IDs so if you have 512 it's going to be of the size of 512 um and uh, then you have start positions and end positions so yeah that's uh, basically it and uh thing is you then you don't need to 
change uh, a lot of code but when you come to validation one thing that i found from um, uh, one of one of the guys in uh, Sh- shared in kaggle uh, in one of the kernels is uh, doing something like this so what's this doing is it's going through the predicted start index and end index and going through each of the offsets and then choosing it choosing the correct uh, tokens from the original tweet which performs much better than uh, doing a dot decode dot decode in bird base has uh, some kind of weird things going on in tokenizers um, it's not wrong but it's how it's supposed to be so that's all about BERT so now the next thing uh, is transferring this knowledge to Roberta so let's see that we uh, now we have we have everything same so we'll just go to the process data function for Roberta so Roberta um, processes to be uh, text in a different way so it expects uh, the text to start with a space so we add a space so you this is I, I've done for other reasons but you can just add a space and then your string so instead of this you can do like uh, str tweet yeah just making sure that it's a string anyways um, and the same thing that we do is for for the uh, selected text so for context and for answer now uh, what changes uh, the length of selected text will be length of selected text minus one because we added a space and then here um, we are doing the same thing except the fact that when we are selecting from index to uh, I index plus length of st we either add a space here or remove the space from here which is before select text otherwise you will never get a match so it also remains the same uh, quite similar to BERT the character targets they remain exactly the same you don't have to do anything you have the tweet tokens now uh, in tokenizers.encode for Roberta it doesn't add special tokens so you don't need to remove anything so here i have them as as they are and then i do the same thing with the um offsets so i have different offsets into it offsets and then i see if uh, my sum is greater than zero i open them um so now i've got target start and end the second thing that has changed here uh, this is my hard coded stuff so obviously i have to add the correct tokens token ids from roberta now and everything else is the same roberta doesn't care about token type ids so everything is zero so you have zeros uh, one zero and then a sentiment token then a two then a two slash s slash s and in the end again a slash s and this one is just s so that's the CLS token and uh, the SAP token for Roberta, you can say. And instead of adding three, now we add four. One, two, three, four. And that's all. And um, you are done, basically. And w- since you're using the offsets, you don't even need to change the evaluation function in this one. Um, so it's, it's uh, quite simple and easy to uh, format your data and when when you know this you can do a lot of different cool things you can process the data and then go back to the original data so you can do a lot of things there but when when you don't know this you are limited so it's always good to know how uh, all this processing is done um i am not going to write any code in this one uh, in this video I've already done that and you can take a look at uh, the Roberta inference and BERT model training code that I've written. I will also add a link in the description below. Um, And uh, transferring it to 
larger tokens during inference time and uh, during training time is also quite easy when you understand all these things going on so you can now uh, if you have if you have a much larger context or your data is more than 512 tokens so you can break it into different pieces and uh, you can use uh, then you can say okay uh, does does it find the answer or not if it doesn't then your start and uh, and tokens are so instead of this if your target idx is empty because it's not going to find any target for many cases then your start and and targets are zero and zero so you can say something like this and then modify uh, your you don't you probably don't need to modify the loss function um and then uh, i think that's all that's all that you have to know and then uh, it would be nice if you can just try to uh, implement albert on your own and see uh, how different or similar it is um so all these um, different transformer mo based models are using different types of tokenizer so you have to take a look at how they format the data and it's it's quite simple and easy so uh, you have the tokenizer library hugging face tokenizers and here you can here you can see you can import the different types of tokenizers and uh, create a sample string and see what it does so here you can see like hello you all how are you it adds a cls token it has a known token and a cp token so uh, padding is also a little bit different for all of them um so i think for Roberto, padding was a little bit different. Yeah. So for Roberto, padding is done by token one, not zero. So this is something that I should have to keep in mind. Um, or you can just see what the pad token is and how it's tokenized. And then you know. So I'm leaving Albert as an exercise for you guys. So if, if you if you do that, feel free to share your work in the comments uh, so that uh, others can also see it and I will pin pin the best one. Um, Albert is using sentence piece tokenizer. Roberta is using uh, BPE tokenizer. Um, Bert is using its own word piece tokenizer. Bert word piece tokenizer. So these two you can find here, but for Albert, you cannot find the sentence piece tokenizer which is being used. Uh, you can find it uh, in Hugging Face Transformers. They are using, they, they have made it, but the, the problem is that tokenizer does not have offsets in it. And it's, it's pretty easy and simple to add offsets in a correct way, but I'm going to leave it as an exercise for you. And um, I think that's, that's it for today's video. If you like it, then do click on the like button and do subscribe. And uh, if you have comments on how I can improve further, let me know. Uh, if you have uh, some requests about uh, next videos, topics for next videos, then you can also let me know. It's very useful. And uh, thank you very much for watching uh, and see you next time. Goodbye.